Now, this next story has all the elements of a sci-fi drama, specifically a data rescue mission involving artificial intelligence that needs to be taught human ways in order to build a time machine. Sound fantastical? Yeah, maybe, except this is actually real-world stuff. Microsoft and Niwa are pairing up and using artificial intelligence to computerise more than a million handwritten weather records dating back more than a century. The information will be used to better understand extreme weather patterns including what causes them and why. But the machines need to be taught to recognise variations in handwriting so that they can translate records into a database. I asked Niwa's Dr Drew Laurie to explain exactly how it works. In an ideal world, we would have machines completely transcribe them and it would be um, as close to perfectly transcribed as possible. But in order to do that, we've got to um, train um, the AI to to learn what a nine is, what a six is, what a four is. And you can imagine that with so many different observers and so many different variations of those numbers, um, it can be pretty tricky um, unless you have a very big and 100% um, uh, confirmed training set. So this, um, this is where uh, we come in. We've got a really massive data archive, and we've also got an army of citizen scientists raring to go to key in data. And with them keying it in for us um, 10 times over, uh, we, can, we can actually evaluate which numbers have been keyed in correctly or 100% correct. And um, what that's going to allow us to do is to make a, a really powerful um, AI training library. And that's, that's the whole thing. Uh, the whole premise behind this project is to actually get um, the training library for AI greatly augmented over what it is now. So will you always need humans to be a component of um, accessing this data, or will eventually the artificial <clears throat> intelligence be able to do it all by itself without you? I would like to think that it would be a really good partnership. You always need um, humans working in partnership with machines. Um, they're as good as what we um, train them to do and program them to do. So in this regard, it will really help our science in that it can take um, the limited resources that we have um, right now for keying the data, rapidly accelerate the process of capturing the old historic data and quality controlling it, and then it gives us more time and resources to actually studying the data and figuring out what was going on with um, significant historic weather events. So how much material have you actually got to play with here? What are we talking about? How many volumes? Well, well NEWA's got, um, you know, linear meters, you know, tens if not hundreds of linear meters of old observations. Um, for this particular project, we're focusing on uh, the week it snowed everywhere, which was a significant snowfall event that impacted New Zealand in the winter of 1939. We're focusing on King and all the data that we have for New Zealand for the entire winter of 1939 to give that week a richer context. So when you talk about data from that week, you're talking about people's, what, descriptions, handwritten accounts of what the weather was like? Yeah, we've got several um, meteorological registers that have recordings of barometric pressure, temperature, um, uh, precipitation, rainfall, and also accounts of the type of snowfall that um, was received in different parts of the country. So that's going to be the focus of um, this particular project. With all the modern innovations that you have around weather instruments and, and predicting and forecasting and all the rest of it, is there any suggestion that what these people recorded on a bit of paper was more accurate back then than we are now? Probably not. Um, there's no, no real assertion that we're trying to make on that front. What we're trying to do is take our our modern instrumental data and what it's going to allow us to do is merge it with older observations um, that go back in some cases more than a hundred years and so that richer long-term view is really important for us to evaluate you know contemporary events uh, extreme events like things like heat waves and hot days and and of course snowfall events which seem to happen um, every now and again in New Zealand and especially in the far north of the country places like Auckland we have had snow even recently but we want to get a better context around um, why they occurred, um, how frequent they occur, and obviously um, what are the main drivers of that. So what excites you the most about this project? I think what excites me the most is obviously, you know, we get fantastic historical accounts that we can look into. So it is like getting in a time machine and, and going back in time and looking at what things were like. But I think what's going to be really cool is when we get all the data together 
assimilated in a, a supercomputer model of what the weather was like during that week and really take a look at those weather maps and say, okay, well, how similar is that event to the one that we had in 2011 where we actually had snowfall in around Northland? Um, that's going to be really cool to do those comparisons using uh, modern cutting-edge tools in climate science. And I think that where I want to drive it with this is that it allow us to develop a suite of analyses for um, historic extreme events. And if we can put a fingerprint on some of those types of events, we can also apply that understanding to our, our forecasting. And that is Dr. Drew Laurie from NEWA.